So what's love got to do with it? It's the name of a movie. It's the name of a song. It's Tina Turner. And if you're a millennial and don't know who Tina Turner is, <laughs> I would suggest you Google it. <laughs> but love is boundless. It can be what you feel for a person, what you feel for an animal. It can be what you, what you feel for a piece of art, a book, a job. It's very hard to tie down and to define. And in my life, I'm redefining it. Although, love is the vibration of my life. I'll tell you why. My real name is Preeti. And in Hindi, Preet means love. This name was given to me by my father, who died when I was six years old. Just six. What a tender age to have a brush with reality, one of the realities of life. So today, I'm going to talk to you about the love that I have for the woman she left be he left behind, my mother. And it's not a cliche, don't roll your eyes, it's a very interesting story, hear me out. My mom found herself a widow at age 34, bringing up three children single-handedly. That's myself and my two older brothers. And this was not the first challenge that she had to overcome. I'll take you back. I'm not going to take you all the way back to her childhood. That was very challenging. I'll take you back to a very interesting and more fun part of her life. She was walking down the streets of London. Um, I would say she was in her late teens, maybe early 20s. And this woman, who in today's world you would call fierce, was beautiful, looked like Sophia Loren, high cheekbones, big, thick hair, and a very curvy body, thin waist, was stopped by a gentleman. And he said to, him, he said to her, I am the chief photographer at Harper's and Queen magazine, and you are going to be our next cover girl. And at this time, she was already courting my father. So, she made a call back to Kenya, and she said, Raji, as she called him, out of love, and it means king, it was not his name. And she said, um, I've been given this opportunity. And he said, no, 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 it's not going to happen. And she said, okay. About a year after that, she was in Mumbai, and she was mobbed by a group of people who thought she was this top Bollywood actress. Uh, she was mistaken for this actress that she looked like. And this word, word got around Bollywood, and an actor called Dharmendra heard about her. And he called her in for a screen test, and he offered her a movie role. And she called my dad, and my dad said, no, 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 no. And my mom was a rebel. She lived life on her terms. So it was surprising that she actually listened to my father. She must have really loved him. And she was back in Kenya, and she found a passion for rallying. She loved to drive cars really fast. So she told my dad, I am going to be a rally driver. And I think, I'm only assuming at this point, he's like, right, let me marry this woman, give her some babies, and keep her busy. <laughs> and so he said he wanted to marry her. Now, when she agreed, it was not an easy feat. My father was already a married man. And the lady he was married to refused to give him a divorce. But my father was shrewd, and he knew how to get his way. He was a very clever man. So where bigamy was against the law in Kenya, in Tanzania it was not. He found a loophole. <laughs> he took my mom to Tanzania, married her, and brought her back. And this began a very beautiful marriage. I mean, they, they were happily in love, and he treated her like a queen. He decked her out, and I'm not making these things up. I promise you this is reality. He decked her out in diamonds and pearls. He took her around the world. She loved to drink Vimto, so he bought her a Vimto factory. 
And then at 34, and then, sorry, 30, and then 10 years later, he died. And here was my mom, an Asian woman in the 80s, bringing up three children, already having a, con a controversial marriage, controversial life, and really not caring what society thought. She was that woman who, you know that saying, no matter what happens in your life, get up, get dressed, and show up? That was her. I just remember her always showing up beautifully dressed, and always with this, this strength about her. And you know, I mean, there were other challenges. There were court cases because of a very wealthy man having passed away, not finishing a will, and there was big families involved. She handled it. And at 17, my age, 17 years old, I went away to university, and a week later, I was back home because my brother had died. He died in a car accident. And it was not drunk driving, it was not in the middle of the night. It was in the middle of the day, he was going to work. It was an industrial area. And my mom and my eldest brother sat with him as he went, as he was in hospital, because he went into a fourth degree coma. And for four hours, they sat with him until he took his last breath. Raju was larger than life. He loved Bob Marley. He loved Motown Philly by Boys to Men. He loved to dance. And he was a very clever businessman as well. And I know he was my mom's favorite. As much as she said, no, 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 I love you all the same, <laughs> I just knew that these guys were two peas in a pod. And here was my mom facing yet another challenge. She had lost a child. And I looked to her, and she seemed to just get on with life. She's very spiritual, my mom. Very. And maybe that gave her this inner strength. About six years later, after my brother's death, it was my birthday. And we were driving from Loresho to High Ridge, middle of the day. And this car slams into us and rears off the side of the road. And, you know, we, we stare at each other in confusion. We've just been in an accident. And this man starts walking towards us, in front of us, and he's holding a gun. And I said, oh, the police are here already. Yeah. So he comes to the side of my mom, the driver's side, and he taps on the window with the gun, and he goes, Endelea. And I said to my mom, mom, just drive. So she switches on the car, because it had switched off on impact. And the gun was still being pointed at her head. And I don't know what changed this man's mind, because he pointed it down and he shot. And by this time, mom had floored the car and we were driving. And she said to me, Pinky, my leg is burning. And in a panic, I called everyone. I'm like, oh my god, mom has been shot. And we take her to the hospital. And luckily, she had the bullet go through her leg, no muscle. No bone was injured. And um, she had some shrapnel left in her thigh. So the doctor walked in and he goes, Mrs. Gilani, you have shrapnel in your thigh. We need to remove it. And she said, one second. She took a finger, threw the wound, pulled out this metal, and threw it in the Petri dish. In front of all of us, I kid you not. No anesthetic, no painkillers. I was like, this woman is made of steel. So, of course, as you get older as a woman, your mother becomes your best friend. Because you realize she is the woman who's always been rooting for you. She is true to you. She's the one woman you can count on. And this was true in my case. My mom is my best friend. I used to talk to her every day. Mom, can you do this? Mom, I need to do this. Mom, let's go for lunch. Mom, oh, my husband's bothering me. He's not saying right things about me. <laughs> And she was always, always that. She was my go-to girl. So, one day, there was a heaviness in my heart. I guess the universe was sort of telling me, brace yourself. Something's going to happen. And I called her up, and I said, Mom, 
I'm not feeling okay. There's something bothering me. And she said, I'll be there in five minutes. And she came. And we had a conversation. And she said to me, Pinky, you can't do this to yourself. It's no, you're doing no good to yourself. And I said, yeah, yeah. But there was still this... I don't know what it was. It was such a heavy feeling in my heart. And we had lunch together. And two hours later... This woman, my pillar of strength, my constant in my life, crumbled right in front of me. Mom had a massive stroke. <sighs> she lost. She lost the ability to move. She was paralyzed on her right side. And she lost her speech. And for the first time in my life, the woman who I looked at as a superhero was actually going through a very human thing and fighting for her life in ICU. So I did what anyone would do at that point. I went home and I fought with God. And I begged him for a miracle. I asked him, to please not put her through any more challenges to help her heal. And I knew, because of everything she had been through in her life, I knew that she would be okay. I knew that this was nothing. She's a warrior. She can handle this. She will fight this and she'll be fine. It's been a year and four months. Mom is still in a wheelchair. And she still cannot speak. And when I sit with her, the silence is deafening. So this is why I'm redefining love in my life. Because I ask myself, do I, mo do I love mom less now? Because she cannot pick me up and take me out and do some rounds in the car? Do I love mom less because we cannot have a conversation, she cannot give me advice? Do I love mom less because going to the mall where it would take one hour now, takes six hours? Do I love mom less because she's depending on me? Was my love for mom conditional? What would you do in that situation? What would you do if somebody who meant the world to you was in this situation? What would you do if you were in my mom's situation? After two weeks, when we brought her home, a neighbor came to see her. And as she was leaving, she walked, you know, I walked her out and she said to me, Pinky, love heals. It's a very powerful statement. But I'm still trying to find ways to show mom love. And I guess one way I can do that is by allowing her to go down this journey without controlling it, without wanting it to have an outcome that is beneficial to me. I guess that's one way I can show her love, is to surrender and release. So what's love got to do with it? I told you before, it's the vibration of my life. It's in my name. But it seems that I'm always tested time and time again on how to show love, how to give love, and how to accept love. I guess what I'm trying to say is that no matter what challenges and what situations you face, try and react from a space of love, pure love, genuine love, real love. Because when you're in that space, nothing deceitful or toxic can come from it.